Greetings and a warm welcome to our online service today. Let us begin our service by invoking the presence of God and the Great Ones to be in our midst, that we might feel their presence as divine peace, as love, as great joy. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, Mother, friend, beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, and our Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Divine Mother, in the language of my soul, I demand realization of thy presence. Thou art the essence of everything. Teach me to see thee in every fiber of my being, in every wisp of thought. Awaken my heart. Om. Peace. Amen. In that prayer given to us by our Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, we see the attitude of the devotee toward God, that as Divine Mother's children, made in her image, we should demand realization of her presence in our lives. Our Guru didn't like the idea of beggary and prayer because we have that divine essence in our own lives that we should demand from God to reveal himself or herself to us. And that is the whole purpose of our existence is to reunite our soul with God's infinite divine power. In the Bible, Jesus says, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And the master gives this commentary by saying, the blessings of the presence of God and Christ are there for those who will make the effort to commune with them in deep meditation. He said, if you follow the meditation techniques as given by Self-Realization Fellowship, you will know more about Christ than the millions of churchgoers who worship him in sermons and external rituals. But don't take time to meditate deeply upon him. He said this, the Self-Realization Movement was sent to the world to awaken the real spirit of Christ within you. And each one of us who has come to the path of Self-Realization Fellowship, you go to Satsanga Society, have come to the place in our evolution that we no longer just want to have external rituals, which are fine, but it's not enough, or just to read the scriptures, which are, is great to inspire us, but we want to have a tangible experience of God in our own lives who lives within us, who has become each one of us. And that is why it is so important for us to meditate. Begin Before we begin our service today, we'll have a period of quiet, silent meditation preceded by a period of chanting. When we chant to God, we should do so with deep devotion and deep concentration. Not just mechanical words, but words that are filled with the devotion and the longing for God. And then we'll sit in meditation for a few moments in that stillness. Be still and know that I am God, the scripture says. And when we learn to still our bodies, to still and calm and focus our mind within, then we begin to perceive that divine presence that's always there. 
And then we can take that peace, that calmness that we feel in meditation into all of our daily activities when we fulfill our duties and responsibilities in the world with that presence of God within us. So let us now chant, I will be thine always. I may go far, farther than the stars, but I will be thine always. Devotees may come and devotees may go, but, my Lord, I will be thine always. This is the determination and this is the devotion that each one of us needs to cultivate in order to draw a response from God. As we sit to meditate, we sit with the spine erect, the gaze lifted to the point between the eyebrows, the Christ Consciousness Center, the Kutasta Center, the center of will in the body. And then we want to make sure that the body is totally relaxed. To help us do so, let us practice one of Guruji's breathing exercises where we inhale and tense the whole body and then exhale and relax. We'll do this several times. So inhale and tense the whole body. Exhale, relax. Inhale, tense. Exhale, relax. One more time. Inhale, tense. Exhale, relax. From this relaxed and still posture, keep the body perfectly still, lifting the gaze to the Christ center. And as we chant, I will be thine always, let the heart's feeling follow the words of the chant. And then we'll sit for a few moments in silent, still meditation. Devotees may come, devotees may go. Devotees may come, devotees may go. But I will be thine always. My Lord, I will be thine always. And when I die, look into mine eyes. When I die, look into mine eyes. They will mutely say, I will be thine always. My Lord, I will be thine always. I may go far, farther than the stars. I may go far, farther than the stars. But I will be thine always. My Lord, I will be thine Devotees may come, devotees may go. Devotees may come, devotees may go. But I will be thine always. My Lord, I will be thine always. And when I die, look into mine eyes. When I die, look into mine eyes. They will mutely say, I will be thine always. My Lord, 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 I will be thine always.
our subject today is an extremely important one to understand and to actually put into practice in our daily lives. The subject is perseverance. And as our guru has said, perseverance is the whole magic of spiritual success. So we'll be delving into the subject of perseverance and having that indomitable will and determination to accomplish whatever we set out to do in our lives. And in particular, to be determined to seek God, to love God, until we have that final union with God. And our guru said that most people live in this world almost mechanically unconscious of any real ideal or purpose. We have various goals that we want to accomplish in our lives to uh, improve our bodies and our minds, to be successful in a vocation, to have happy relationships and so forth. There are many different goals to accomplish in life. And each one of those different endeavors requires determination and patience and perseverance. But above all the temporal goals that mankind seeks to fulfill in life, there is that one ultimate supreme goal, the whole purpose for which we are here, to reunite our consciousness with God's infinite consciousness. And so few people in this world have that understanding, have that ideal to make the most important part of their lives a search for God, a search for those, as Guruji said in his autobiography, those eternal verities, why we are here. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna said, among thousands of men, perhaps one strives for spiritual attainment. And among the blessed truth seekers that assiduously try to reach me, perhaps one perceives me as I am. And Guruji explains when he says, only those who seek him earnestly to the end of the path succeed in finding God. This idea, this kind of perseverance, attracts the blessing of God referred to by Jesus. So the last shall be first and the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. So it's this kind of perseverance that makes us successful in our search for God. Most people don't understand why we are here. There was a famous philosopher that said, He who has a why to live for can bear with almost any how. And the masters, our guru, has given us why we are here and how to achieve that ultimate purpose. Because he said the soul must eventually return to God. He said it is our divine heritage. It is our unalterable destiny to find God. There's no question about that. So to have that firm determination to seek God until the end, then we receive the blessings of God and the great ones. When we come to a path like self-realization fellowship, we have that initial enthusiasm. Everything is opening up to us, a whole new realm of possibilities, a whole new understanding of what life is all about. And we're very enthusiastic. And God may give us some some treats, some response to our prayers right away to encourage us to keep on. But then, as the devotee progresses on the path, and this is true down through the ages of in all religions, that because maya or delusion is so strong, it tries to prevent us from making that effort and tries to discourage us. But we must keep on. And that is why perseverance is the whole magic of spiritual success, just to keep on. We see in the lives down through 
the centuries of great men and women who have accomplished something through their determination, through their decided perseverance to make sure that no matter what the obstacles were in their path, they would pursue, they would keep on. Noah Webster spent 36 years writing the dictionary. That great composer Beethoven, they said that hardly a bar of his music was not written and rewritten at least a dozen times. It went over and over and over again. The English historian Edward Gibbon, he spent 20 years writing his famous Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. And he spent many, many years writing his autobiography over seven, eight, nine times again over the years with that firm determination. The great artist Michelangelo spent seven years working in the Sistine Chapel on his creation and the Last Judgment. Leonardo da Vinci spent 10 years perfecting his painting, The Last Supper. So we see the idea of having that determination and that perseverance to accomplish a worthy goal in life. One of the greatest scientists of the 20th century, Albert Einstein, had that determination and that perseverance. He said, I think and think for months and years. 99 times the conclusion is false. The 100th time I am right. So we should not be dissuaded by momentary lapses or so-called failures because those so-called failures are motivating us to keep on and to make a success of our lives. There's a humorous story of a young mother who was very frustrated with uh, an assignment she had gotten uh, in a volunteer organization she was working with. And one day she was with her son in the kitchen and she just threw up her hands like that. And she said, oh, I'm going to quit. It's not worth it. And her young son said to her mom, he said, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Remember, mom, people will never remember, they will never remember you for what you were, you were going to do. They will only remember those who keep pressing on. He said, Abraham Lincoln didn't give up. Thomas Edison kept pressing on. Benjamin Franklin always kept hope alive. And he said, and look at Victor McNassing. And his mother said, well, who was Victor McNassing? And the son said, see, you never heard of him. He gave up. So remember, never give up. We have to have that, that vision, that one focused idea of achieving our goal in life. And the spiritual path is the ultimate. And because it's the ultimate, finding God will mean that eternal salvation, that eternal liberation in God's infinite consciousness and love and joy. So Maya will try to hold us back. And we see in the lives of the saints that they had to struggle. They had that determination. No matter what obstacles, problems came in their path, they kept on. And that's the example for us to read the lives of the saints. Guruji once said, study the lives of the saints. That which is easy to do is not the way of the Lord. That which is difficult to do is his way. He said, St. Francis had more troubles than you could imagine, but he didn't give up. One by one, by the power of mind, he overcame those obstacles and became one with the master of the universe through that determination and perseverance. And then Guruji goes on to say, why shouldn't you have that kind of determination? I often think that the most sinful action in life is to admit failure. For in doing so, you deny the supreme power of your soul, God's image within you. Never give up. Some inspiring words of, of Master 
Because if we give up, if we give into momentary failure or setback, then we are denying that infinite power of God within us, which is God. Keep on. St. Teresa of Avila, one of the great Christian saints of the 16th century, had that same determination. But that was her favorite word, determination. When she was instructing her young nuns, she would again and again tell them to have that determination. She's the one that said, saints are sinners who never gave up. She said, God created man free to choose perfection. This act of will, determination, is what he wants. He wants nothing more than our willed choice. Then he does the rest himself. Isn't that beautiful? He, she's telling us that God wants us to have that will to choose him. And then his blessings, his grace comes into our lives as well. She said, the Lord helps those who are determined to serve him for his glory. All is already as good as done when a soul determines to practice mental prayer. And during that time in the 16th century, mental prayer was not, was not known. Most of the people would pray verbally. And she said that there was mechanical prayer and they would pray very fast, not really knowing what they were praying. And she taught her nuns to take the mind within and have that mental prayer inside where God is. In the 16th century, this is revolutionary. And now here in the 20, 20th century and 21st century, our guru has brought to us how to even go deeper into that mental prayer through the scientific practice of pranayama meditation. Guruji said, the scientific way of entering the superconscious state is by the methods of life force control I am giving to you. If you faithfully practice these techniques and meditate deeply, I prophesy you will never give it up. He said, if you practice these techniques and meditate deeply, he said, I prophesy you will never give it up. He goes on to say, Lord Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree in meditation with the firm resolve. Beneath this banyan bough, I take this solemn vow. Let dharma, bones, and body dissolve until the mystery of life I solve. From beneath this tree, I shall never, never be free. He had that determination to sit there and to meditate. And then Guruji goes on, so should all of you feel resolute when you sit in meditation, saying to yourself, I am unshakably determined to know God. I am shakably, unshakably determined to know God. With perseverance, a new awakening will come, a new inspiration. Be fearless in the consciousness in life and death. I am ever living in God. Think about those words of the Guru. If we practice these scientific techniques of meditation along with devotion, he said, I prophesy, you will never give up. We keep on. Because then we begin to experience that divine presence within ourselves. And even Guruji, to inspire us, he had to struggle too in the beginning of his sadhana. He said, when I started meditating, I could not imagine that I would ever find joy in it. But as time went on, the more I meditated, the greater became my peace and bliss. So convince ourselves that the Master has given us these techniques. He has followed. All the gurus have followed these techniques of meditation, this sadhana, and have proven and are showing the way to us. If we keep on, if we have the determination, there was a, another yogi. He was a, a famous American baseball star. His name was Yogi Berra. And 
he had a lot of humorous quotations, such as it's like deja vu all over again, and it ain't over till it's over. And one of his sayings was, the hardest thing is to get started. But really, the hardest thing is to finish. And really, there's a great truth in that. To, we start on the spiritual path, and then if we're faced with obstacles and disappointments, do we give up? Or do we continue to the end? That's perseverance. Before Master came to America at the behest of his guru and Babaji, he prayed deeply to God. He wanted to know that he wouldn't be lost in the West, in America, that he would forget God. And he prayed and prayed and prayed. He said until his brain was ready to burst with that firm resolve, never to give up until he got that response from God. And then we all know from reading in his autobiography of a yogi that Babaji came to him and told him that, yes, you were the one that was chosen to come, go to America. Do not fear. You will be protected. One of the great disciples of our guru was Sri Gyanamata, who faced many physical challenges and obstacles in her life. But her goal was to always keep God uppermost in her mind, God and God alone. She said, keep the goal ever shining before you. And this is what we need to do. In all the various experiences in our lives that we go through, ups and downs, to always keep the goal ever shining before us. I mentioned earlier in that little story with the, the son and the mother about Abraham Lincoln. and He was a great example of determination and a perseverance. He was born into poverty. He experienced failure again and again and again. But he had that firm resolve to accomplish something great, even though he fell many times. And then one time in, 19, in 1846 when he was running for Congress, and it happened to be one of the times when he was successful. He was at a, a church meeting, and the, the minister was talking about heaven and hell, and he called on everybody in the congregation. He said, all who wish to go to heaven, please stand up. And everybody in the congregation stood up, except for Lincoln, who remained seated. And then the minister said, and all those rise who do not want to go to hell, and everybody rose, except Lincoln. And everybody sat down again, and the minister looked at Abe Lincoln, and he said, I see I'm grieved here to see Abe Lincoln sitting back there unmoved by these appeals. If he doesn't want to go to heaven, and he doesn't want to escape hell, will he tell, tell us where he wants to go? And Abe Lincoln got up slowly. He looked at the minister, and he says, I'm going to Congress. He had that firm resolve in his mind. But Lincoln, you know, he failed so many times. He borrowed money when he was a young man. His business failed. He had to pay back the debt. It took him 17 years to pay back that debt. In 1836, he had a total nervous breakdown. He was in bed for six months. In 1843, he ran for Congress and he lost. In 1854, he ran for Senate of the United States, and he lost. And then he sought the vice presidential nomination in 1856. He lost. In 1858, he ran for the US Senate again. He lost. And then in 1860, as we know, he was elected president of the United States. And was that chosen one, that great soul who was able to keep the, the union together? And Lincoln said, the path was worn and slippery. My foot slipped from under me, under me, knocking the other out of the way. But I recovered and said to myself, it's a slip and not a fall. So we should think about that. When we make a mistake or an error, 
It's just a slip. It's not a fall. And if we feel that we've fallen down, we pick ourselves up. We keep on going. And we are inevitably going to have setbacks and challenges as we make a deep effort to seek God, as that force of Maya or Satan tries to dissuade us. And the greatest tools of Maya are discouragement and doubt. When we're struggling, when we're making the effort, we feel that maybe I'm not making enough effort or I don't feel like I'm making the progress I should be. This is Maya putting seeds of doubt and discouragement in the mind. We must be aware of that and then affirm our divine nature. No, I am a child of God. I am the soul. It is my destiny, my divine heritage, to realize my divinity. Our guru wrote a letter to a devotee that was going through a very difficult period of physical suffering. And he wrote, Please affirm, I am healed in the castle of his presence. So we can make affirmations like this. I am healed in the castle of his presence. I am healed in the castle of his presence. And then he goes on to say, Please do not be discouraged. God is testing your determination to wholly love him and work for him. It's an important point to remember. God is testing your determination to wholly love him and to serve him. And then he goes on to say, Soon it will be over. It will be behind you. Love God more than ever with kindness to all, ever firm in him. Giving, giving us that encouragement during those momentary times where we feel somewhat discouraged. Can I make it? Dayamata, that great disciple of Master, she went through struggles too, especially in the early years. In her, with her body struggling um, to meditate deeply. And one time she said, in the beginning when the path would get difficult and I occasionally felt a little discouraged, I would think, all right, I'll settle it this way with you, my Lord. I will use this life to try to find you. And I will put my whole heart, mind, and soul into it. I will keep on no matter what happens. She said, when doubts would come, I would say that to him. She said, if you make that kind of resolve, you will find that the divine makes no false promises. When he says, all things shall be added unto you, you will find him in fulfillment. No craving will be left. And that was one of the passages from the Bible that Ma wanted to prove in her life, seeking God first, and that everything will be added unto you. And she said, I proved that in my own life, seeking God first, and then every desire we've ever had will be fulfilled in that oneness, with that, in that presence of God. Gyanamata was a great saint as well, as I mentioned earlier. And she went through very difficult periods too. And in one of her letters she said, I have had a long period of what Catholic mystics call dryness. It is a good word. It helps to watch the mind. I mean, it helps to suppress weary, downward trending thoughts to say, it is the mind. Another help is the affirmation that truth is not changed by a mood and that I have only to hold steady and success is sure. The effect must follow the cause. She said, for long years I wanted to know the technique of meditation and a true guru came and gave me those techniques of meditation. So it is the mind that can play tricks on us, that can tell us that we're not making enough effort or that we're not progressing. But truth, God is still there. Nothing has changed. 
we have to suppress those weary thoughts of discouragement or doubt. Recently, I was sitting on a meditation bench on the cliff overlooking the ocean in the Hermitage Meditation Gardens. And as I was sitting there on the meditation bench, it was a beautiful, clear day, beautiful blue sky, beautiful blue ocean, the waves were breaking on the shore. And it just, it was such a sublime, beautiful scene. I closed my eyes and I began to meditate for a while. And then it began to, I began to feel a little bit chilly. And I opened my eyes and a bank of fog had come in, completely obscured the sun, I couldn't see the ocean, it was cold, completely changed view. But I realized the sun is still there, the ocean is still there, the sky is still there. It's just this, this fog that is keeping me, preventing me from seeing that beautiful scene. God is always there inside us, everywhere around us. And it's that fog or veil of my or delusion that hides that divine presence. And we must, as Gyanam said, keep the goal ever shining before you, even during those difficult times. I mentioned St. Teresa of Avila earlier, a great saint of determination, and she founded many convents throughout Spain, and she was in the, the city of Toledo one time wanting to establish a convent there. And the ecclesiastic governor was trying to discourage her because she didn't have any money, she was poor. And so she was a very, she had a lot of charm, and so she finally convinced the governor to give her the opportunity to establish a convent there. And he said, fine, I will let you do it, but on one condition. He said that you receive no revenue or benefactors from the town. And she was poor. And she was so excited and she felt that, yes, I will be successful now. She only had, in, in those times, the currency was ducats, little gold coins. She only had three or four ducats. Teresa said to the governor, she said, it is as good as done. Because, she said, Teresa of Jesus and three ducats are as nothing. Teresa of Jesus Three ducats and God are everything. Because she had that faith, she had that, that surrender to God's will, and she knew that anything was possible. Guruji said, Though he fail many times, the man who keeps on striving, who is undefeated within, is a truly victorious person. No matter if the world considers him a failure, if he is not given up mentally, he is not defeated before the Lord. This truth I have learned from my contact with spirit. The greater your troubles, the greater the chance you have to show the Lord that you are a spiritual Napoleon or a spiritual Genghis Khan, a conqueror of yourself. This is determination. Winston Churchill was another good example of someone that had that same resolve to be strong in the face of challenges. He says that he failed sixth grade, that he went through the eighth grade several times because he had a hard time learning English. And then he was, he was elected as prime minister of England during World War II. And the first speech that he gave addressing the House of Commons in May of 1940, about 80 years ago, he said, you ask, what is our aim? I can answer in one word, victory. Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of terror. Victory however long and hard the road may be. For without victory, there is no survival. And we can take that example and claim it as our own attitude on the spiritual path. Victory at all costs. 
because our spiritual survival depends upon persevering, keeping on. It's interesting that years later, Oxford University asked Churchill to make a commencement address at the university. So he arrived with his normal props, with his top hat, his cane, and his cigar, and he walked up onto the stage. And with great dignity, he walked up to the lectern, and he, he took his hat off and put the cigar down and the cane down. And he looked out at his waiting audience. With great authority, Churchill's voice shouted out, never give up. And there was a deafening silence. And then after a few seconds, he looked at them again, and he said, never give up. He picked up his hat, his cane, and his cigar. He walked off the stage. End of commencement address. That is the type of life we have to live. Never give up. Never give up. Perseverance, Master said, is the whole magic of spiritual success. I would like to read a letter that many of you may be familiar with. The, the guru wrote a handwritten note to Ananda Mata, who was one of his earliest and closest disciples, the sister of Sri Dayamata. And he wrote her a note, and she kept it to herself for many years, and then she felt that there was so much inspiration in it, she wanted to share it with others, and so it became published. And it's a letter that I read again and again as inspiration, because it's not only our effort, but when we come on the path, and we make the effort, we also have the help, the assistance, the guidance, and the protection of God and the Guru. The Master said that as the devotee makes 25% effort, 25% is the Guru's blessing, and 50% is the grace of God. So we have that help. When we make the effort, we keep on, then we have that guidance and protection of God and Guru. This is the letter that he wrote to Anandamata. You must never lose courage. Divine Mother sent me to pilot you out of the clouds of your mind. Everybody's difficulty is different, and he or she has to win that test of karma and Divine Mother. Overcome all by constant inward calling on God and utmost devotion in words, thought, action, and obedience to Guru. God does not talk readily to the devotee, but a Guru does. And the easiest way out of all difficulties is to listen to him and obey him. Your troubles I do not mind. I will never give up my job about you. It is better to conquer evil and not go on living with it forever. Never for a moment identify yourself with momentary flashes of error. Have no fear, even when I am gone and no longer visible to your eyes. You will never be alone. I may not scold you then, but I shall ever be with you and through Divine Mother guard you from all harm and will constantly whisper to you guidance through your loving self. We see this beautiful promise of the Guru to guide us, to be with us always. So do not make life discouraged and tired but be ever interested in, in doing for Divine Mother, no matter if war, sickness, and death dance around you. That is the secret of victory over delusion and all troubles. Be cut to pieces, but never give up. Be a divine leech. Suck at the blood of wisdom, even though torn to bits. A smooth life, Guruji said, is not a victorious life. And I will give you lots of good karma so you will get through. I will not only ever forgive you, but ever lift you up, no matter how many times you fall. Keep unceasingly trying to conquer. Then not only will I invisibly help you, 
but visibly through many here. It is in kindness and continuous good behavior that you shine with happiness. Divine Mother will help you to win through your own efforts and the blessings of the great gurus. I am not building a mansion for you or giving you riches that will perish, but I am making an imperishable home with all riches for you in my Divine Mother's mansion. This is the promise from the Guru that we will go through inevitable tests, trials, obstacles, but it is to test our love for God. Do I really want you, my Lord? So in summary, we are so blessed to have the ultimate purpose for which we are here on earth, to reunite with God again, our soul with spirit. That is the ultimate destiny of each one of us. And then we have the words and the examples, so many, to give us that determination to never give up, to keep on fighting, that it's inevitable that we will be facing problems in our lives. But keep the goal ever shining before you. Let me close these with these words of our guru. And then we will have a few moments of praying for others. And then we will end with our guru's healing exercise. Master said, the devotee who perseveres and joyously, thirstily pursues this path with zeal to the end can be the first to enter the higher dimensional heaven hidden behind space and the screen of the senses. As long as you are on, on this earth, why not live life in the best way? Self-realization is not a dogma or so-called or so religion. It is the very foundation of your spiritual existence and mode of right, triumphant living. Out of millions who are sleepwalking through life, indulging in the daydream of matter, you are the one who, because of your previous good karma, has been called by the infinite to cease being a prodigal child and return to your home of infinite fulfillment. So let us now sit for a few moments and pray deeply for the physical, mental, and spiritual well-being of all those who have asked for prayers and to also pray for greater understanding and peace and brotherhood in the world. Now please stand and we will have Master's healing exercise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their bodies. Om. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their minds. Om. Heavenly 
Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their souls. Om. Let us raise our arms and chant Om for greater peace and harmony in the world. Om. Let us close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Mother, friend, beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, and our Guru, Paramahatsa Yogananda, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Divine Mother, give me a greater determination to seek Thee, to love Thee, to go on seeking Thee, to go on loving Thee until I find Thee. And above all, may Thy love shine forever on the sanctuary of my devotion and may I be able to awaken thy love in all hearts. Om. Peace. Amen.